there are a ton of mathematical functions and on the screen you're just seeing 10 random ones I either thought of or looked up because I wanted to include a couple of interesting ones but anyways there are a ton of functions and in mathematics how we actually work through a number of uh, the problems is by understanding the different categorizations of functions. For example, if I say we're using a polynomial, you can envision what a polynomial is. If you know uh, what an exponential is, okay? These are all very important classifications, and the same is true for complex functions. In order for us to be able to work with complex functions, we need to know how to categorize them. And so in this video, we're going to be doing basic categorization of complex functions. And this is complex analysis by a physicist. Let's get started. Here are the three basic categorizations of complex functions. But they may seem simple, but they're incredibly important. We have non-analytic functions, which are functions that are not complex differentiable anywhere in the complex plane, okay? Analytic functions are, well, functions that are complex differentiable somewhere in the complex plane. And then we have entirely analytic functions, which are functions that are complex differentiable in the entire complex plane. You may hear these referred to as entire functions, but I call them entirely analytic functions because technically by definition, these are analytic functions. Also, I think saying entire functions just is, it's a goofy name for me. So I call them entirely analytic functions. Let's do an example of each. Here we have the, a pretty simple and straightforward function. This is one of the easiest complex functions we can get, just x plus iy. If we test this with our cauchy riemann equations, and as you can see, our cauchy riemann equations are satisfied. Moreover, if we actually take the derivative of this, f prime of z, well, that's just 1 or a constant. And we can take this derivative anywhere in the complex plane, and we're going to get a constant out. So this function is an entirely analytic function. Now we have this function, which we can further write out and simplify down. So we just have a 1 on x plus i, y, which is really just x minus i, y on x squared plus y squared. Now, because I'm lazy, you're just going to have to take my word on this, that this function is complex differentiable. In fact, if you go back to my cauchy riemann equation video, I work through this entire uh, problem to show it satisfies the cauchy riemann equations. But just by doing some old school uh, analysis of this, we can see that this function is 1 on z. Well, at 1 on at z equals 0, so i.e. at the origin here, At the origin, right here in the center, we don't have a determinant form. It's an indeterminate form. And as a result, we can't take its derivative there. And so this function is only complex differentiable everywhere else in this complex plane here, with the exception of the origin right at the center there. And so this function is a perfect example of a function that is only analytic. It's not entirely analytic, but it's only analytic. Here we have the complex conjugate. And again, if you've watched the cauchy riemann equation video, you know that this function is not complex differentiable. But let's just do that quickly to show you. And you can see here pretty quickly and easily, just by testing one of the Cauchy-Riemann equations, that this function 
is non-analytic. It's a non-analytic function. Now, you may be looking at this and saying, this is such a simple concept. Why do I need to know these categorizations? And that's because in complex analysis, there are tons of theorems, tons of things that make our life so much easier, whether you're a physicist or mathematician or whatever. And by understanding whether or not a function is analytic or not, or entirely analytic or not, you're going to be able to use some theorems and not other theorems. We want to be able to use those theorems to make our life easier when doing uh, any sort of complex mathematics. So that'll do it for this video. If you have any questions, comment below and let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.